The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the wine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he cuts away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, to make it bear even more. You are pruned already, by means of the word that I have spoken to you. Make your home in me, as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself, but must remain part of the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, with me in him, bears fruit in plenty. For cut off from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me, it is like a branch that has been thrown away, he withers. These branches are collected and thrown on the fire and they are burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will, and you shall get it. It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit, and then you will be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the vine, you are the branches. Now this is something that all of us hear a lot, a lot. Many events, many camps, many programs, they like to use this to symbolize um, our source of strength, the source of our grace, to remind us that, as what Jesus says, without him, we, are, we can do nothing on our own strength. Now, that is what we know, and that is what we have been taught. But perhaps we can go a bit more deeper. You see, in the, if you look at a tree, any fruit tree, you, you will, if, you, if you grow fruit trees, you will know that not, they, it doesn't always bear good fruit. Right? Let's say it's like, it's like my house, we used to plant a mango tree, and the mango tree beside the longkang. So you know if you plant the tree beside the longkang, you get very good nutrients and you get very good fruit. But as the years go by, the tree will start to grow old and the ability to absorb nutrients will get less and less. And the fruit they bear also becomes sort of like not so good anymore. And sometimes the fruit can be rotten, small. After a while, the branches even may lose the ability to bear fruit cannot flower anymore. Is it the fault of the tree? Is it the fault of the fruit? Or is it the fault of the ground where it is uh, planted? See, there are many, many causes for why fruit sometimes go bad, or rather they don't grow. But in terms of spiritual reality for us, our tree will never grow old. Our tree will not lose the ability to give nutrients to the branches simply because our tree is God. A physical tree will not last forever. Eventually, it will die. But the spiritual tree will never die. The question is whether are we willing to draw nutrients from that tree. Sometimes you see fruits on a tree. You see a, a tree, you notice good fruit, bad fruit, rotten fruit, small fruit. Does it, does it mean that the tree is selective to give, okay, this branch I give, this one, this branch I give? No, nature doesn't work that way. But perhaps it's because certain branches may have, do not have the ability to absorb nutrients. So it is with us. Even though our source is in God, the, the nutrient is the grace of God, not everyone is able to absorb the kind of grace that God wants to give us. St. Paul tells us that God's grace is sufficient for us. So what we, the graces that we pray every day is enough for us. 
We don't have to ask for more and we definitely won't get less. But each person will get what he or she needs for that day. Nothing more, nothing less. To ask for more is like we take vitamin C a lot but the body can absorb so much only. The rest of the vitamin C is flushed out in excess. So it is the same with God's grace. We should not ask for more than what we need because it is enough just for the day, just for us. Now, the, the, the thing about grace is this. All of us, or rather, how God dispenses His grace. Now, St. John of the Cross, one of the Carmelite doctors of the church, says this, God grants each person in the mode that he or she is able to receive it and to the quantity that they are able to receive. That means, however much we can receive, God knows, and He'll give us that much. He will not give us more, He will not give us less. And so, all we need to do is be open to receive it. Just like in the tree, a branch is ready to receive however much it needs. It knows naturally that that's all it needs and nothing more. Anything in excess probably will spoil the fruit. So it is with us. But what good is a fruit if it's not given for people to eat? A tree can bear nice fruit, but if it just remains there, it's like we have a fruit tree, the fruit really looks very nice, we don't want to pluck it because it looks so nice, we don't pluck it and give it to people. Then what's the point? It will just rot and fall off and it will be you or no use to anyone. So for us, when we receive that grace, we bear the fruit for other people to enjoy. The thing is, are we even willing to bear fruit? And if we are not, then we need to ask ourselves, why? God, and then the other, the other thing is, when you want to make, a, let's say, a spruce or a hedge of grass grow nicer, or you want the, the branch to bear even more fruit or flower even more, more you need to prune it. Those who do gardening will know, we just prune and it will grow even more. Now externally, internally, the pruning is done by God. As Jesus says in the Gospel, we are all pruned already by means of the word that has been spoken to us, which is words of Scripture. But what about external pruning? A tree needs external pruning. So do we. External pruning is being surrounded by people who we come in contact with. They are the ones who prune us. Many spiritual writers and saints will tell us that the, the, the more saintly person, the more polishing he gets. Because just like a piece of thing which is rough, the more you polish, the more shiny it becomes, or the more smooth it becomes. So it is with us. We may not like people who are abrasive, who are difficult, but they are there for a purpose so that they can polish us to become more shiny, to become more saintly and holy. I'm not asking all of us to go and just purposely go and irritate somebody and get them to you know, irritate us in return. It doesn't work that way. But when we are amidst, we are among people who, whom we, don't, we are not able to like, if, if I may put it that way, still, it is through their presence that we are purified because we learn how to be more charitable. It is never easy to be charitable. It is very tough. But it's precisely because we are asked to do so by God. And we, are, we can only do this if we remain a part of the tree, part of the vine, which is why Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. On our own, our charity, our love is limited to the human sphere. But given God's grace, the nutrients from God, then we can go beyond ourselves. Ideally, it's easy to say. In reality, it's difficult to do. But we are not called to be successful. As St. Teresa of Kakata tells us, we are called to be faithful. As long as you are faithful to the command of loving one another, even if you are not successful every time, that is enough because that is how we are known to be children of God. As St. John says in his, the second reading, we are known as the children by the way we act, by the way we live. 
And so, as we continue this celebration of Easter, leading up to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we continually pray that we will be able to draw nutrients, the graces that we need from God, to live a life that is worthy of our call as Christians, as a human being, to carry out this love of God so that it can be diffused to everyone that we meet.